does uh, that manage to fight through the post-lunch coma and come on down. All right, my name is, uh, most of you probably know me, uh, Jeff Goff. I am currently working remotely, thankfully, for Clearbill Technologies out of Virginia. We might be hiring. Um, I say might because I know that we have one place recently filled, and I think we have maybe one more slot. So come on down and talk to me afterwards, and we may be able to fit something in. So uh, you're all here probably to learn about uh, the um, doing about uh, lazy caching. Um, how many here are familiar, first of all, with DBIX class? Okay, excellent. Familiar and maybe makes sense. All right. Um, what uh, this is uh, this module actually has been used in anger, as they say. Um, it is quasi available right now on CPIN, uh, or rather on GitHub. If you go to the repository, uh, the talk the the talk right here is available already online from. Uh, from July, and the module I believe I will be pushing here to uh, CPAN after I get final clearance and get one or two little bugs worked out. What we're working, what I'm working with here, uh, is a basic uh, dance replication and trying to speed things up in terms. The two biggest problems in okay, the the two biggest problems in uh, computer science, as we all know, of course, are naming things, are cache validation, and not by one errors. Uh, that thing goes, and I am hoping to at least help clear up uh, number two, which is of course, which is uh, caching in databases which is not the greatest place to do caching. Usually we use something like a Redis or something else, but we're, what we're trying to do is speed up database access and cut down on uh, the number of actual writes to the database. And also, <laughs> of course, we can't have just one thing, uh, have, two, have another feature, being able to do uh, computed columns and be able to initiate a cascade when you write one, when you write a record to, when you, when you write to a column, this system will let you essentially cascade to other columns and perform as it were magic in the database without the need of fancy triggers that certain languages might not support or without, well, uh, a lot of this can be done using triggers in common SQL databases, but uh, in order to do that, you have to now, instead of maintaining just your Perl code, you know how to maintain your Perl code and your trigger code, and you have to know all of the situations where uh, a change can be triggered. So, overall, what's, it, what's it, the module good for? Uh, first of all, we give you fine grain control over column access. Uh, in our case, we have people coming on board that may not know that we are, you're not supposed to tamper with certain columns in the database. So you're not allowed to update or you're not allowed to update or delete certain columns in the database, and we stop that. You can do that again in SQL, but now you have to maintain both SQL code and Perl code if you follow that approach. Uh, calculated columns are a relatively new feature in SQL. Uh, they are going to be in the 2020 or so spec, uh, as far as I know, for SQL. And uh, while some vendors have support for calculated columns, most still do not. So we are filling in a gap here. The idea be behind a calculated column being that you have a col you have columns A, B, you have columns int A and int B, and you want to create a calculated column in C from the sum of A and B and that you can do right now in uh, Postgres, Oracle, and a few of the major biggies, uh, but a few of the major 
databases, but not all of them. So this gives you a platform neutral way to do that. And finally, the big one is how to know what to update when your data changes. What we're doing right now is uh, we have essentially a small uh, helper block that we add to your DBI schema, which says for call, which says if anyone updates column A, please validate and recalculate columns B and C using this formula. So that that's the main thrust behind this module. We have a lot of unfortunately largely unnormalized data that we're dealing with and we need to make sure that the that we need to make sure that the tables are and the tables and records remain consistent no matter what happens and we have of course um, business logic which details that and if you're like most a lot of places uh, your business logic tends to get scattered throughout a lot of your code and what we're trying to do here with this is move business logic back into your DBI schema back into just the configuration section so we have one place to look for code that needs to get up for columns that need to get updated when when you have a when you change something instead of having to go through and have a create route that does the insert that and change data. You have an insert, you have an read route which lists your data. You have an update route which also does other work to the data. And finally, you have a delete route which also works on the same data. What we're doing here is collapsing all of those down to one, down to one block of code inside your schema where it will live without interfering with anything else. So, um, what, there's no better way than to learn how this works with an example. So, let's start out with a uh, table. In our case, we're going to use a basic table. Again, this is denormalized for those of you that know, for those of you that know databases. Uh, the total prices at, at the end should not be there uh, in a fully denormalized form sorry, form, fully normalized form. Anyway, we have a project table and we have an item table. Projects are composed of a list of items. Items, as, as I'm reading off here, have a name, parent ID, and inner relations behind that, and a unit price. So what we are going to want to do eventually with this is um, be able to keep be able to maintain the total prices for the projects. We want to maintain the number of units and total price for the items, and hopefully do that all of that automatically. And by the time we get to the end, uh, we'll have set up constraints. So all you need to do to use your DBI schema is to write a little bit of, is to write a little bit of code which says total price of units is this and update it whenever these two fields change. So if you ever go in and change the unit price or change the number of items on on a particular item or remove or update a pro or move an, or update an item, it will maintain all that for you in one block of code in one file. That That's the motivation behind this. So, we, so one of the things that we want to make sure of is in our data display, you have, I, you have a list of IDs, obviously, for your, for your items that you want to display, but necess not necessarily want people to tamper with. So those we want to assign to be read-only. We want to take the total price of all the project items and compute that for you, and compute that. We know how to do that, but we don't want to have to do that every time something changes. So when you, so when you update an item, we want to change the project total price. 
some of you may be worried, and I still am sort of worried, uh, that this appears like um, some form of dark magic or hazy quantum action at a distance. And yeah, it is that. Uh, but it's all in the, it's all in the, um, it's, it's all for getting a simple interface to the user where they, where they can't do much to mess with, where they can't do much to mess up. It's very appropriate if you have um, a, f a fairly senior programmer, i.e. yours truly, and a few fairly junior programmers doing work and trying to communicate with that. No, Ruth, I'm not talking about you out there if you're watching. But what this sets up then uh, is an is a uh, collection of columns which all update themselves. So, um, for those of you that know what DBIX and DBI schema set up, you have here the <coughs> pardon me. You, you have a you have a project ID, a day type, and wouldn't it be nice if you just go in and as part of a schema, say, is nullable zero, just make it not nullable, so no one can change it. Well, we had that. It is actually these days called is read only. So you sign essentially a, essentially sign, I'm, pardon me, um, the nullable feature actually was done a few months earlier and I forgot about that. So there's both the nullable portion of the data and there's also a read-only field, as you can see over here. So you have both, so you have both a null, you know, you also, first of all, say, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my, my fault, uh, is nullable is actually to be DBIX, DBIX schema. The read-only is our, is our new field. So, um, first of all, um, before I go on much further, does anyone here use uh, DBIX Candy to create schemas or any other work? Okay. Uh, this I found out while looking at how to implement the uh, package, this package. Um, And I am entirely incorrect here. All right, I I got a little I got a little hit myself in slides. My my apologies. Um, one of the problems that you may encounter inside your DBIX uh, schema is that there will be a section that uh, DBI schema loader generates for you, which you absolutely cannot alter unless you want to set off an alarm next time you want to update the schema. So we, so we allow this method here to set a read-only flag inside your DBI schema, uh, but you may not want to do that for various reasons. Because what DBI schema does for you is, and the DBI schema loader does is it will add in a a line saying, warning, do not up, update anything above that. So what, we, so what we've done is created a set of um, methods that you can add and make a, say, a your table IDs or make your total or make your prices or make your names read-only with the, well, make read-only method. If you're using DBI, DBI as candy, which no one here does, and I was surprised to learn that exists myself uh, when I was doing some research, uh, what this does is it shortcuts all of the uh, RSW package methods and gives you your own names for that, which cuts out a lot of the uh, clutter in DBIX. It is great to read, a n nicer way to read things, uh, but it's not supported by schema loader right now. But still, we support that. So later on, you certainly can add in the um, is read only if you'd like there. 
and we also add in flexibility to add in uh, a make read only method. So if you want to add in stuff later on with a say a uh, role that you want to insert or if you want to do a um, or if you want to um, add a subclassing in that fashion. Okay. So how so how should you go about you so when you use this how would when will you see this? Uh, this is all DB, straight for DBI's class code. Uh, the re results set of our item. We find our uh, find our item, and we want to change the ID from one to forty-two. Well, what happens here is you get the attempt to read modify reeling column in your log output. Uh, it's done solidly so that the user never needs to see the error, but this way you can trap that error in your own code. Again, a small feature, but if you have a fairly large specification, a fairly large set of classes, and a large set of columns that you don't necessarily know what each one does, this way is an easy way to say, please do not mess with this column. So, what did we do? Uh, the first thing we, that we did was learn how to protect our sensitive data columns with either make read only or is read only in whatever format you use. We are pretty much agnostic. I do raw DBIS class. I do raw, I do DBS class with schema loader. I do DBIS candy. Those are all there. Um, the next thing what we want to do uh, is learn how to update the total price on our ID, on our, on items automatically. So the first step here is going to be um, is going to be saying how is going to be saying that any change to the quantity will invalidate the total price and the project's total price because we said earlier that a project is a list of items and therefore when any of the associate items changes that project will change. So we're now linking from a low level uh, set of co columns in our item table up to a higher level column in the project table. So what, so what happens there is we have a lower level access and we have the higher level access, but this is all done through DBIX, so you have no worries about um, one, about a change in one item <coughs> Pardon me. One item's uh, project changing another item's project. That is guaranteed not to happen. Pardon me. Uh oh, emergency. Okay, so anyway. Um, so now, when you up, so now the idea is that when you update the quantity of an item, we will essentially remove the total price because that has not because that has not changed. If you have if you have an item, then the if you have an item and a price and a number of items. So once the number of items changes or the total price changes, that changes the that will change the quantity. Or first vice has it were. If you change the unit price, then you're going to need to change the total price because the unit price has changed. Because if you're shipping a widget for two dollars three cents, and you have five, and you have five widgets, is now ten. Is now ten dollars. Well, twenty-three, forty-six, fifty-two. Of uh, say five, say five twenty for five, for four items, is now two forty. Is now four dollars. Is now five sixty per item. Five eighty. Not that good doing math in my head at this point. So that so this now so what you so what you now have. There, there's one more part to go here. This part here simply removes the old data. 
essentially is a way of invalidating and clearing cache in your data set. And again, it's a little bit of magic at a distance. And while I'm personally not a fan, um, you do what you got to do. You can look at it in a bunch of ways. Um, again, we support uh, DBI. We support uh, Candy. Pardon me. We support the um, DBI's Candy as well. So we have these. So we have the other formats here. Uh, package invalidates. You can add that as well, or use straight up the keyword invalidate if you're using DBI's Candy. I should have mentioned that at this point. If there are questions, by all means, feel free. I'm watching the audience. So just call call out if you have any issues or questions. So um, now what's going to happen here is when let's see, see what got okay. Yeah. So now what's going to happen is live code. In ordinary DBIX class, what would happen is you find is you find your item, you update the unit price, you change the quantity, and ordinarily you expect the ordinarily you expect the total price, whatever it was beforehand, to remain the same. So now what happens when we are in the new system that gets that gets deleted? Which is probably not a good thing because you're changing the total price of the items. But what I've not mentioned beforehand is it's also the lazy part of the lazy cache. And this change will not get and this change will get made, but you won't but you won't ever see it as a user in normal operation. Because what will happen here is the total price will actually get updated will actually get updated the next time you actually use it. So there's a little bit of um, a little bit of entanglement there. So now, <clears throat> so the last part of the whole thing, last last part of just a few first few columns, is go, is taking the total price and adding. The calculation here, and again, this way you can take this way. Yeah, you ha you have a lot of flexibility inside uh, your typical DBI schema to do accessors to change things to update text, but this way it's all enclosed inside one schema file, and you can also go further and sep and separate out just that little bit of logic that actually changes your fields. So it's now narrowed down to so that's is now all now all now narrowed down to the DBI schema file. And in a newer version of this, once we've got a few of the bugs worked out, you will no longer need to have invalidation to null. You can set up whatever columns you like. Say you want to have a um, a cache date a, a, a cache date timestamp to look at your data. So that next time someone actually views the data, you also you have an automatic validation time as well. So if it goes beyond, if the data is too old, then it will immediately get flushed and, re and refreshed. That can be done right now uh, in the current setup, uh, but we're going to make things a little bit easier for subclassing and uh, injecting, injecting roles later on. So, um, what this does, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully fairly self-explanatory, whenever you change the total price or update things, first of all, we're going to, first of all, we're going to remove, clear out the old unit price because the unit price is, is dependent upon, I prefer the term really here, depend upon uh, fields, but it's not, Quite how things work because of the because of how you have to cross boundaries between the project and item. So you have you have that. Uh, the project's total price also gets up also gets invalidated and updated at that point. And again, this is all done in 
Um, I do Perl's 5 and Perl's is programming. So this is done in more or less a lazy fashion. And, and again, uh, you don't need to know the, the column name here. So you simply return the value that you want to assign without worrying about data type conversion. We handle all of that internally. Now, you, you might want to act now. Ordinarily, things get calculated right then and there, uh, just to keep things straightened out. And that way, you don't, that way people aren't looking at, it. people don't go in and update field and wonder why things all of a sudden got deleted on themselves, by themselves. And that way it cuts down support phone calls that I get, especially wondering, okay, why did we delete this? Why did you null this field out? I didn't do anything with that. So what we have right now is ordinarily it runs in non-lazy mode. So ordinarily you will not see the behavior that you that we got back here, uh, printing, uh, printing that and returning zero. Ordinarily what that does is it computes the, computes the value according to that formula right then and there. But one of the problems that we had with this uh, that we are trying to solve was that there are some fairly long and complex calculations. It's not just a simple multiply two fields together. Apparently there's a lot more work going on in our client databases than, um, than we should be doing. So what we, so what, what we say instead of updating every single record every single time, what we can do here is add the is lazy flag and say, don't worry about updating it, just the next time that you view the data, if you ever do that, then we'll take care of it for you. This is very useful if you're doing bulk updates, if you're doing, um, if all of a sudden a, your widget manufacturer adds 15% to the price of your widgets, then you have to go through and multiply each unit price by 0.15. And you don't want to have to recalculate projects every single time. You don't want to recalculate items every single time. So what you do then is you is you can either assume that that will happen and use the is lazy flag, or uh, we also have some methods as well to go through and to, to let you choose whether a field is lazy or not right now, or and choose whether a field is read-only or not right now. So in, in the case of the manufacturers that I was talking about here, uh, we, we have a manufacturer that has gone up, that has gone in and changed the prices on their, all of their items, adding 1% to all of them. So, so the home, so it's you know, pretty simple to do in DBIX. You loop through each item, you update the unit price with the current unit price plus 0.01. So you add one cent to all the unit prices. But as I said before, what happens is in our current schema, if you remember that um, items are tied to projects, uh, this means that every time you update an item, you will update that project field as well. So if you have, say, a project that requires 50 items, then you have 50 items, you have 50 item updates and 50 project updates, which you probably don't want to do. So one easy thing is if you expect that to happen a lot, then you simply set the is lazy flag on the unit price, and it will only update that whenever it needs to, or set, or better yet, set the is lazy flag on the project ID, I'm sorry, on the project total price, and it will do that only when it needs to do so at the very, very end of the calculation. Or, you can, do, or you can use this feature here. We temporarily suspend all calculations within the block, so what happens is you still do the fine, you, you still look the items, and then for and pick a, an arbitrary item, and say on that record, 
uh, temporarily suspend all calculation inside here. So then go in and do your updates with the four mile line loop on each entry. Add that and we close off. Uh, nothing will happen in, nothing there will happen until you actually update or view the uh, toll price. So we free essentially a cluster of fields here that all are interdependent. And, we, and this way, whenever you say update a item price, everything still maintains integrity. Everything still has the same value as it should. Uh, we have other features in the background that test for this as well. Uh, for instance, um, when, whenever you do, we have one feature that whenever you do a, whenever you view a column, or just, it will check this, which of course is a little bit slow because you're running the calculations that you are, that we are supposed to not be running very often. So this, so this is a way, this is also, by the way, stolen pretty much directly from the, um, stolen directly pretty much from the schema transactions. And in reality, what will happen is uh, you won't need to use the dollar IM0 there and just be able to do this from a schema level and not worry about how you're representing the text. What particular item is in what particular object. This is one problem that I need to address here when I get back home. And of course, if you want to, we have a whole bunch of ways to actually let you do this. Uh, the, the old, the original DBI, DBIX class way would be to add in, would be to use uh, the new add calculation method so that when you have, so that your total price now was calculation and not some, and not scattered out throughout your application code, scattered out through your controllers, and out in views is now all in one place. You can do that with straight DBIS class update, or you can do that with, um, or you can do that with the uh, DBIS class candy adapter as well, and it's used straight at calculation. It is the same internally, so it works out pretty well. So it works out the same way each way. So uh, what we learned from so what we learned from all of this stuff here um, is that we ha is hopefully um, that you can protect your database a little bit more from whether it be junior programmers going in and updating columns that they shouldn't, or just or just if you have say a large organization and people don't necessarily know what to do with the current set of tables and how they're currently used, you can. Update, you can block features with that. Um, you can use read only, you can use the read only flag if you like. Um, columns, uh, cache, eval cache invalidation can happen across tables. So from, so from one table, you can update uh, columns in another table and get rid of those. Uh, the, what I have here with the project and item is a fairly small uh, mixture. Um, is a fairly small set of tape, fairly small set of tables to work with, but we're right now working with roughly four to five uh, different uh, permutations of columns and tables, and we're getting into yarns and threads and all sorts of fun uh, pre-calculation and post-calculation, and those are all working out so far pretty well for us. Um, it there will right now. Um, the feature for coordinate columns is not quite there, but you can do that if you want by overriding how we check for how we check to see if a field is lazy or needs to be recalculated. You can, recal you can change that yourself and not have to worry about using um, nulls for any of the uh, columns. Um, I'm kind of running to the end of here. Um, if are there questions here about how things, about how this is all going on? Any comments? Any thoughts? And I realize this is a little bit, uh, <laughs> definitely a little bit on the short side. 
The last time it came up till about 45 minutes, I had a lot of questions from people. Um, aha! Ah, <laughs> I, I, I should have, I should have explained that beforehand. Uh, yeah, given that I do a lot of work in Perl 5 and Perl 6, uh, I think the question was, this is all for Perl 5? Is that? Okay. Yeah, d yeah d despite the fact that I do a lot of blogging on Perl 6, uh, this is all still very much Perl 5 code. Okay, far away. Okay, the, the question is, is this module use, uh, useful if you're only doing selects on data? Um, I would offhand say no, uh, because what we're trying to do is, um, my personal belief here about our data set is that actually the problems that we're experiencing are just a missing index in a field somewhere. But um, if you're doing read-only, if you're doing read-only, um, this is more for the front end, this is more for the fr a front end application or for, um, say, cron jobs that go in and update data every so often. Uh, right, right now, what we're using for is in an application to, for uh, car rental agent, I'm sorry, for um, car dealerships, where they need to know the current price, where they need to know the current, um, purchase value of cars on their lot, which changes very often. Um, it can change based on economic factors. It can change based on whether someone rolls a new model in on, on the lot, and the old one drops in price. So we have a lot of calculations going on in the background every time you want to view a, every time you want to view a car. So right now what happens when you click on the front screen to view all of the vehicles on the lot, it has to go in and do a lot of work to for each car to calculate the current value of cars on the lot based on age and uh, who, based on age and a lot of other factors going on. So right now it goes, Go one, two, three, four, five, calculating each field and is extremely slow. So what we did here was because most time you don't need to know uh, what the purchase price of the, well, you will need to see the purchase price of the vehicle displayed, but you don't necessarily need to know all of the details of how the car, of what the car's history is, you know, was it damaged on the lot, was, <laughs> Uh, is someone behind on payments? You don't need to know that. And what this does here is helps you isolate all of that. So you, as so you don't necessarily need to calculate each time all of the fields on that car. This is basically to prevent the, um, basically to work around, if you will, uh, the unfortunate notion of the so-called God object. Uh, database programming, where you have essentially one table where everything derives from, and if you make any changes to that one table, the changes ripple throughout the database. So we're trying to basically make that sort of basically trying to mitigate that change. So when you change one thing, it does not ripple down until it needs to, because most of the time, when you're like I said, viewing. Um, if you just want to know what's on the lot right, what's on the lot right now that I can sell this guy, he's coming in looking for something in you know the forty-five to fifty thousand dollar range. What do I have on here right now? And right now the application is too slow to do that. So what I'm doing is trying to cash just the purchase price of the car. And anything else here can be done in a purely lazy fashion, and not need to worry about when, not need to worry about the last damage that was done or that sort of thing. So this is very much done on a highly, highly denormalized database. So I don't expect that. I, I would hope that you're all working with nice, clean, normalized databases, but we all know the realities here. We all have, all databases have columns here that don't necessarily depend upon 
that don't that shouldn't be there or should be tracked differently. And this is a way, hope hopefully, to work around those situations where you have that one column that you just are always forgetting to update in your data set. This way you have this way you take that one column and put calculation inside your DBI schema and forget about it. That's kind of the whole. Um, that's more or less the um, more or less what I aim here for. Any other questions? Okay. I don't see anyone here, so I think we will wrap it up and still have four minutes for you guys to uh, go to supper or go to this class. Thank you.